Congratulations to the winner. That was ahead of the fight. Um, you've obviously had a few minutes to compose yourself and think about it. How, how do you feel the fight went? Um, you know, I had a tough opponent in front of me on two weeks' notice. Uh, I knew he was going to bring the heat, but um, you know, this has been a project that I've been working on for over ten years, uh, and I was just super blessed to have this opportunity to be here and, uh, and perform in the UFC and you know represent where I'm from and. You know, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Uh, I had COVID at the end of October. I was in quarantine for two weeks. Uh, the day after I got out of quarantine, that's when the UFC called. So it was a bit of a toss up, but I said, hey, if I get this opportunity, I have to take it. And um, hey, sometimes if you don't take it, you don't get it. So I just put my, all my stuff together, got my mind right, and uh, came in and got the result. I really feel like I could have uh, put him away earlier, but like I said, Lewis is a tough guy. Um, it's hard. He hit me in the back of the head a couple of times into the first round. I got a little bit out of it, but recovered well. And um, as you saw, finished the fight and feeling great, man. Feeling really, really good. How about uh, how about was your COVID? Did you have any symptoms or anything? Yeah, uh, three days. I was, uh, you know, wicked headache, really tired, and then I lost my taste and smell, which was really weird as well. Um, but uh, I want to give a shout out to Lorenzo Pavlica at Primetime Performance. He took me up to Potosi Mountain, 6,000 feet, and had me run into the snow. Cleared those lungs out, and then of course John Wood with Syndicate MMA. You know, he has been such a huge help for me since I moved to Vegas from Hong Kong. Uh, I've been here literally to the day, one year I've been living in Vegas. This is my new home. The goal was to come here and you know get the opportunity to maybe take something on short notice and fight in the UFC. And he's been my right hand man and, and mentoring me through this process. And one of my best friends, Matthew Polino, uh, flew out here from Singapore. He's now my roommate. So we've just been grinding and working, and you know, all my teammates at Syndicate, Sean Strickland, Chris Curtis, all these guys have been pushing me and just getting me better every day. And you know, I, I couldn't have done it without all of these people. And uh, it's a team effort, and uh, I'm just super glad that I got this opportunity. And uh, here we are. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Sasha, great fight. Thank you. Did you know that you were a five to one underdog going in? And how, how did that affect you? And why do you think that was the case? You know, uh, it's really funny. My father was sending me nonstop predictions from these guys on YouTube telling me that I was garbage and uh, how Lewis was just going to put me out in the first round. And, you know, that that really dug deep to me. And it hurt because I'm like, man, you guys know nothing about me, man. I've been, I've been in this game since I was five years old. I was one of the best karate fighters in Southeast Asia growing up as a kid. And I've been fighting forever. And uh, for them to put that on me, it kind of put a chip on my shoulder. And... I, man, I, I, no disrespect to Lewis, man, but he's been fighting in his own backyard in California against guys that, in my opinion, uh, I would never fight because I would, I would never fight someone with such a bad record. And, uh, you know, I fought, I fought five round fights. I fought against World Sambo champions. I've been training with some of the best fighters in the world. Uh, the current world, uh, welterweight champion, Kamara Wisman, was a training partner of mine back in 2016. So I've been there and I knew what I was capable of. And, you know, to hear all these people that have never fought in their life tell me that I'm garbage and to see my uh, my odds line, I think I was like plus 450 or something crazy like that. And the people that were close to me, uh, they were like, man, we're putting all our money on you, dude. So I was like, I had to go out there and get the result. You know what I mean? I had a lot of support. You know, I'm from like, I'm an international kid. I'm from a lot of places. I had people supporting me from Russia, Scotland, Hong Kong, UK, Europe. So I had a lot of people that were... Uh, wishing me good luck and, and you know I can't go in there and just fold. I had to come out there and come out with that W and that's exactly what I did. Absolutely. He came out really strong. Did he ever have you hurt? Um, you know, there was one point in the fight where he caught one of my kicks and I tried to grab me roll out of it and um, I took a couple shots in the back of my head. Uh, I got a bit of a hematoma on the back of my head. The ref didn't catch it. It kind of discombobulated me a little bit but um, I was able to just get my my wits back and uh, you know separate and just catch my breath and get back to work I could tell uh, you know he's a strong guy he's very muscular and usually those builds if they don't get people out early they start to gas and those lungs start to burn and I'm a guy that's got very good conditioning and I can go 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 I mean I fought five you know five five minute rounds and you know I train at syndicate they train us to get us ready like we're, we're in there working every day hour and a half drilling we're sparring we're going hard John Wood knows exactly what the recipe is to make sure we don't get tired in that ring. And, you know, and it, it showed tonight. You know, third round, I came out so fresh. Uh, you could see I was light on my feet, and people, some of the doctors were like, man, where did that come from? And I said, it's just how we train. Absolutely.
last question for me. His output, his output really started to decrease. Was that, you think, because the extra muscle? Did you hear him gasping for breath? Because, or did you think you heard him? Because it looked like he just wasn't the same fighter after that first round. You know, um, we got into a couple clinch situations where we were going kind of knee for knee, um, and his knees were not touching me as deep as my knees. I was going through his, uh, I was trying to go through his spine with my knees, whereas his were just touching me. And I could feel his energy, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I could feel his energy start to dissipate. And um, I believe I landed a spinning back kick in the third round, and I felt everything go out. And um, and not long after that, I landed that right hand, and that's kind of uh, been a big successful strike for me. When I land right hands on people, they usually go down or they start shooting like crazy. And my whole career, every time I touch somebody, they shoot on my legs. And uh, wrestling defense is something that I worked, you know, 10 years, so I can keep standing. I'm a stand-up striker, I'm a technical fighter, and I believe uh, when given the opportunity to put on a full camp performance, this was, again, two weeks notice, I'm really gonna highlight and I'm really gonna put on a show for the fans. And I feel like this was just a small little taste of what I can really bring to the cage. Great work, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, sir. It's not straight uh, Did you think you needed the finish in the third round? I did. I really did. Um, I, I go into every fight trying to finish the fight. I don't ever wanna go a decision. I don't try to find the easy route. Like I said, I knew this guy was gonna come hard. I knew it, like I had to dig deep to, to get where I wanted to go, but I knew if I put everything together and uh, I would get him out. I, I, in my mind, I was envisioning a first round finish. For some reason, I thought a head kick or a flying knee would kind of end the fight, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But once I started to get my jab and my range and my footwork, I could see how tired he was. And like I said, once that right hand landed, you know, it was a case of the end of the fight. Were your coaches telling you to lay off the kicks? It's kind of, what, what was the reason for that? Um, he was timing me on my kicks a little bit, um, and I wasn't setting them up as well as I would have liked to. Uh, that's a bit on my, my, probably on my preparation a little bit more. I'm very confident in my kicks, but, uh, you know, like I said, two weeks notice with COVID, I didn't want to go crazy with my output. I wanted to keep a nice pace and be able to come out and just put a pace on him. And, and you could see it when he started shooting blind on me, I could tell he was so gassed and, uh, you know, like I said, I, I like to pity patter, work my way up, and start to increase it. When you saw that right hand land right on his, uh, I think it was on his jaw, on his, on his, on his ear, you could just see he just went down, and I just had to get him out of there. This might be a, a weird way of phrasing it, but is the last minute fight for your debut any? Is there any benefits to that? So you don't have to dwell on it for as long as if you had to go through a long, grueling camp. It's like a 50-50 situation. Uh, sometimes you like to have that time where you can really work and get that preparation in but in reality two weeks kind of was like was kind of like the perfect situation i fought in dubai uh back in september uh came out of that fight without any injuries so i could just kind of continue the COVID obviously kind of you know was a little hiccup on the road but at the same time i was able to heal like a couple little niggly injuries and then you know next thing i know i get the ufc call up and then i've got that big uh jolt of uh, energy that's like all right man we've got to go in there and uh get it done you know my manager daniel rubenstein he's been amazing and, and in helping me get to where i need to go and you know john was in my ear and just telling me man look you've got the, you've got the ability to, to be amazing you know you've got the ability to do such amazing things in this in, in this promotion so you know, let's just get our head down, let's get in, let's train, let's work, let's focus, and, and here we are. Well, one final one, uh, Joe Rogan said you yelled something at him after the fight, what'd you yell at him? He's my hero. I mean, I've been watching Joe since Fear Factor, uh, you know, you know, since I was a teenager, so just the opportunity to just see him watching one of my fights, commentating on one of my fights, and then being able to be interviewed by him was uh, pretty surreal, let alone DC. I, I love DC, he's one of my favorite fighters, and. You know, John Anik and just just this whole environment. Seeing all you guys in front of me is it's a blessing because I'm usually the one on the computer watching you guys interview the fighters. So to come out here again, I'm a Hong Kong kid, born and raised, uh, first ever in the UFC, and you know just to have this opportunity to not only uh, put a highlight on Hong Kong fighters because there are Hong Kong fighters that are up and coming young guys. Um, you know, I just want to give that motivation to them to keep working. And, you know, that opportunity will come if you just keep working. I've been working on this for a very long time. Ups and downs, you know, you just got to keep working, keep following your dreams, and, and that, that's, it's all going to come, come together eventually. With the uh, UFC calling you the day after you, you were done with quarantine, did they know you'd been sick and you'd been in talks with them, or was this just purely out of the um, blue? I'm going to tell you a really funny story. So I was uh, supposed to corner my buddy Sean Strickland 
um, in his first fight with Jack uh, Marshman. And um, when I went and got my COVID test, it came back positive. So that was the first indication that I had it. Um, I hadn't felt any symptoms, and then all of a sudden, boom, I just got, uh, you know, I, I lost my smell, I lost my taste. My fiance is in France, and I haven't seen her in six months. Uh, I originally booked a flight on the 3rd of November, but because of their lockdowns, they, uh, they canceled my flights. So that day that I was supposed to uh, leave, my manager texted me and was like, we got a fight for you in the UFC. So I was like, holy smokes, like it was all meant to be, you know, just that opportunity to be in the UFC. But my fiance was like, oh, she was so upset. But um, I'm sure she's happy now. <laughs> so here we are. So uh, are you, were you 100% uh, going into training and uh, probably not into training, but going into this fight? Um, I truly believe I was as close as I could be to 100%, but, you know, with the COVID, the first week back, uh, it was rough. I was going through some kind of battles in my mind. There there was a couple seconds where I thought maybe I needed to talk to Danny and just let him know, like, I don't know if I can do this, but as soon as I was, as soon as I was up running in the mountains, I'm telling you, I was putting in 10K, and, uh, you know, 10K in the mountains, just running uphill in the snow. I don't know if that's the remedy to curing your lungs, but it worked for me. I was able to hack out all that garbage in my lungs and came back on Monday and just felt like how I was supposed to feel. Uh, and of course, working with John and, and, and Matthew Polino, we were just grinding and, you know, I was doing pad sessions two, three times a day, running, grinding. I mean, this is all I've been doing my whole life. And if some virus is gonna prevent me from it, I'm gonna have to fight through it and just push. And, you know, like I said, two weeks is not <clears throat> ideal, but I fought in five days notice with a torn meniscus against Munir Lezez. Um, I'm a fighter at the end of the day. I don't, I don't pick my fights. If the fight comes to me, I'm ready to take it. Um, I'm a motivated individual, and I believe that I have one of the strongest mindsets. You can see it in the fight today. That guy was hitting me in the back of my head, um, and I just came through. I just kept pushing, and I knew I was going to get that finish. There was nothing that was going to stop me. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys.